Howdy ho, right here, coming to you with some Dead by Daylight, a game that I have been playing religiously for pretty much the past half a year. Aprox. I've been addicted to this game. Like, of all the games that could, like, reach over a hundred plus hours in my inventory, my Steam library, this ends up being at the top, or in the top five most played games that I have on my list, that tells you right there that it's a good game to me. Like, I really, really love playing this game. It's essentially, for those of you who don't know, Dead by Daylight is a game where you cooperatively work with three other people, either strangers or one to three friends, against a psychotic killer who wants to smash your brains in, or... To more accurately put it, they want to put you on a meat hook and eat you for dinner later. Um, nom 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 nom. And you essentially have to go around one of several various maps, activate generators, which will empower uh, the exit gates. Once you get a total of five generators fixed, the exit gates are powered and you can open them and then you can escape through them. There's also the alternative... Alternative... Yay, English! The alternative option, which is the trap door, if a total of two generators have been activated and you're the last person alive, or if you're the last person alive and everybody else has escaped, there's a trap door hidden on the map that you can escape through. And that's essentially the, the gist. And if you're the killer, you have to kill everybody. Simple. But there's a whole lot of other layers to this. There's perks, there's offerings both on the killer and on the survivor side. You need to have a lot of tactics in order to make in order to make things work for you. Now since we're in a game, I'm not going to talk as much because I actually take this game pretty hardcore, so Essentially, this is how the game is going to be, Mike. I'm probably going to be a lot more upbeat during the loading screens. So during the generators, you have these mini games that come up, where essentially you have to time it to get into the white uh, little uh, notch on the bar. Gives you a little bit of an extra boost in repairing the generator. If you miss it, the generator explodes, which the killer will see through his vision. And of course, I forgot to mention that there are numerous different kinds of killers. The one we're dealing with right now is called the Wraith, which can turn invis invisible via a bell. So he, he has a tendency to sneak up on you when you least expect it. Of course, you can actually see a little bit of a silhouette on him, if you're quick enough. Uh, no, you're going on that side. <laughs> I'm not dumb, I'm, I'm going on the side that has coverage via the tree, and an easy escape route. Uh-oh. I'm going this way. Thank you, and have a good day. Are you really following me? Hello. Oh. So a tactic that some people use is that they fill up the generator until it's like 99.9% .9 done. Because if you activate it right away, 
Killer will know where you are, but I also think the other reason for it is that once you get down to, like, one or two generators, he starts to know where to kind of, like, camp, if you will. So, if you... If you do that, if you, like, bring him up to near full power and then activate him near the very end when you're ready to go. You'd be, you'll be in a good place. Also, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm trying to find a generator, but I end up running into these guys constantly. Come on. I got you, stop whimpering. Looks like there's a generator right here. I don't like working in the cornfield, it's risky. Well, I was going to leave it there, but then he, she decided to activate it. Light us up like a beacon. Please don't find me. Okay. Continuing on. Where is that last generator? I think it's somewhere in the middle. In the cornfields. So the way this series is going to be structured, likely, is going to be one match per episode. Possibly two, depending on if the length is really, really short. I want to give you guys enough good content to work with and enjoy. Hello. Good job. So proud of you. And the door is right here, too. Now, it's usually in really bad taste to have the exits open and then abandon somebody to a hook. Usually, you go back and try and save them, even at the cost of your own life. Me? Well, I'm kind of a good person, so I have to go back. The only time I end up being a real jerk is when it involves my friends. <laughs> Because nothing says friendship like backsta backstabbing. Can't even say that right. God, haven't you guys missed me on YouTube? All the grammar errors? Really? I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and get this person. I'm gonna try and be a good person. I'm probably gonna die. Oh, never mind. Not going to be a good person. Somebody else is doing it. Okay, I'm going to be a good person. I'm going back. Is this his death hook? You can usually go on the hook a maximum of three times. First time, you don't have to struggle. Bar starts full. Second time, you start midway, so you have to struggle and you don't get a chance to escape. Any time after that is the death hook. So this should be fun. So are we just gonna leave him? I think that I think the killer's like camping him or soft camping. Can't be sure, but if we can't get to him. It's most likely that. Sorry, Coco. I'm so sorry. Never really dealt with the killer at all. <laughs> Got no boldness points. Oh, 
Okay, so to kind of summarize here in the best way I know how and without having some sort of guide, objectives is quite literally working on the objectives, the generators and stuff. Survival is when you do stuff like take down hooks, uh, sabotage traps, stuff like that. Um, altruism is when you help other people, like you heal them, or I believe it's also like taking them off the hook. And boldness is anything that involves interacting with the killer, running away from the killer, stunning the killer, shit like that. I think st or stunning the killer for survival. I might have a bit of that those details mixed up. Basically, boldness, killer, altruism, being a per good person, survival, fucking with shit, and objectives, uh, actually paying attention to the game and what you're supposed to do. Thumbs up. So I should probably show you the blood web before I cut to the next part or next match. So I'm level 39 with Claudette. Like, I've already, uh, as you can see, I've already prestiged with Dwight and Jake. You can, I believe, prestige up to three times, and every time you do, you get a new, uh, a new accessory or a new piece of clothing. Like, you get a bloodied shirt, bloodied pants, and then a bloodied face. So, I've been working with those two, now I'm working with Claudette. Eventually, I'm going to work on Lori Strode, and I haven't gotten a DLC yet to get Ace which in turn I would also get the Hag Killer, which I'm sure you'll will just love and be introduced to soon, I'm sure, in the series. But eventually I'll get that DLC. But yeah, Blood Web. Already got my designated perk for the Blood Web. What do I want? I want... Shit that helps my toolbox. Okie dokie, moving on.